Hi, my name is Art Adams, and I'm the product specialist for Cinema Lenses at Airy. And I'd like to talk to you about what makes our line of signature lenses so unique. In the days of film, it wasn't hard to match primes and zooms because film is a very forgiving medium. But digital isn't, especially at higher resolutions and at HDR. So what we attempted to do was to create a family of primes and zooms that would intercut perfectly. And we've done that. All 16 prime lenses from 12 millimeters to 280 millimeters match perfectly. And our four zooms that range from 16 millimeters to 300 millimeters intercut seamlessly with the primes. And with an additional 1.7 times extender, you can take our longest zoom all the way out to 510 millimeters. Now let's look at what some of those characteristics are that you should look for when intercutting between our primes and our zooms. People often ask me, can I use a large format lens like a signature lens on a Super 35 camera? And the answer is absolutely yes. When we came up with a concept for these lenses, we knew that the Mini LF and the Alexa 35 were going to coexist, and these lenses were designed to work equally well on both. And we've tested them out to 9K so far, and they've held up spectacularly well. So, everything I'm going to talk about in this video applies to both those formats. When Airy invented the PL mount standard in the 1980s, it wasn't common for most DPs to shoot 35mm film one week and 65mm film the next, or to mix those formats on the same production. But now, with Super 35 sensors and large format sensors, we see that all the time. So what we set out to do is to create a new lens mount standard that would allow you to take any lens and put it on any camera regardless of the sensor size. And we optimize the mount in such a way that we can now make lenses that we couldn't make before. We can make better lenses and lenses with unique characteristics, much like the Signature Lens series. LPL is an open standard, which means we're effectively giving the design away. And many lens manufacturers are adopting LPL because of its obvious benefits in terms of lens design. And LPL mounts are available for virtually every camera out there on the market today. If you go to the Airy website and look at the signature lenses section, we have a handy chart that will show you which mounts are compatible with which cameras. We use the word bokeh to describe the quality of the autofocus image, and it's just as important to design that look as it is to design the look at the point of focus because the background sets the stage for everything that happens in front of it. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, in this lens, the autofocus highlights are taking on a ring shape. And these rings have hard edges, and they interact with each other. And my eye is attracted to hard edges. So I don't see hard edges just at the point of focus. I see them all throughout this image, which means my eye is moving around constantly. I'm not just looking at the point of focus. I'm seeing a little bit of everything. With this signature lens, at the same t-stop, the same distance, and the same focal length, the background is beautifully smooth, those hard edges are gone. I still feel the shapes in the background, but they don't draw my eye away from the point of focus. And that's what we're going for with signature lenses. We want to create a very natural look that tells your eye where to go in a very natural way without distracting you from the action and the story that's happening in front of the background. Distortion is a fairly common property in a lot of lenses. And what it means is that straight lines in an image either bend in towards the center or they bend away from the center. And we don't find this desirable because we're going for the most natural look that we can. So in this example, here's a lens that has some fairly obvious distortion. We can see the straight lines in the image are bending. And this can be an interesting effect, but it's harder to make a lens that doesn't do this. And that's what Airy does so well. In this example of a signature lens, you can see that all the straight lines are very, very straight. Our tolerances in terms of distortion are very tight. And we feel this produces an image that represents more what the eye would see in an environment. And that's what we're trying to go for, natural beauty that doesn't distract from the story at hand. And that's 
the harder thing to do, but that's where our lenses live. Focus breathing means that when the lens changes focus, the image size changes as well. And it's basically zooming. And all simple lens designs do this. That's not what we wanted in signature lenses. We wanted to give you the ability to gently redirect attention without reminding the audience that they're looking through a lens. Here's an example. With this non-airy lens, racking from the back of the chessboard to the front results in a sizable image change. And this is a little distracting. I'm reminded that I'm looking through a lens. It feels a little artificial. The signature lens gently redirects my attention from one end of the chessboard to the other. And I don't feel like I'm reminded that I'm looking through a lens. My attention simply shifts with the focus. I think this is a very powerful tool for naturalistic storytelling. Focus ramping is a weird one, and I want to show you how I discovered it because I was a cinematographer for a long time and I had no idea this existed. Take a look. In these four images shot with a signature prime and three other lenses, I noticed that the signature prime was brighter. And I kept sending emails to headquarters in Munich to the optical team asking why our lenses were magically brighter, and they kept responding and saying, we don't know what you're talking about. I finally sent them this image and they explained focus ramping. That leads me to this next image. What I did was I put a piece of typing paper over the map box of a camera and I put a sky panel in the front and I created this perfectly even field. And I focused at infinity and about six feet on two different lenses, one signature prime and one non airy lens. And as you can see, the non airy lens drops off in exposure significantly between infinity and six feet. It gets really dark. It loses maybe a half, two thirds of a stop. And this is a real thing. What this is, is T stops are set looking through the center of a lens when it's focused at infinity. But on longer lenses, when you focus closer, you actually lose exposure on most lenses. You don't notice this because a lot of the time on a long lens, you're shooting a close up. And if a, a face is big in the frame, you may not notice that it's a half stop darker, but it is. And signature primes and zooms don't do this. So this was a cool little trick that I wanted to share with you because it wasn't on my radar. But hopefully now that you know about it, you can take a look around and see if you can find it as well. Chromatic aberration is what happens when all the wavelengths of light all the colors of light don't focus in the same plane. And this results in a color fringing effect in out of focus areas, specifically around areas of high contrast. So for example, in images of window frames or trees with branches against bright sky, you'll see colors, greens and purples and magentas that you wouldn't normally see in the real environment. It looks unnatural. And this is a particular problem for HDR because these colors become more vibrant, more saturated, and more distracting. Now, I'm not allowed to say the signature primes don't have any chromatic aberration because they do. It's not completely possible to eliminate it fully. But the amount is so minimal compared to any other lens I've seen that you'll really have to look for it under extreme circumstances to even see the smallest amount. And that's the part that we emphasize with the signature design, trying to create images that are naturally beautiful. My favorite part of the signature look is how these lenses reproduce skin and faces. That, and that's so important to cinematographers. Speaking as a cinematographer, I can say it's my number one concern. What's nice about signatures is they're not perfectly color neutral lenses. They're a little bit on the warm side. Part of this is because we don't use leaded glass, which there are some manufacturers who can still use this. We think it's bad for the environment, so we went with different, uh, different option. And the option we went with was a glass that does roughly the same thing, but it has a little bit of amber to it. It's a little bit of warmth. And we like the way that pops skin. These lenses are surprisingly warm and pleasing. The other thing that I like is that they are extremely 
high resolution lenses. Now, don't get scared. That doesn't mean they're sharp because sharp is different. Sharp is how you reproduce that resolution and you can do it in different ways. And there are ways to do that that look artificially sharp. And in fact, this is something that used to happen a lot in film lenses because film is a naturally soft medium. So you really wanted to punch, say, the coarse detail, the things that you would focus on like eyes and get that on the film because the film was going to uh, add a natural softness. Signatures are very high resolution. They don't just punch one portion of the, the detail in a face. They capture all of it. And the result is like you're looking at somebody. It looks very, very, very natural. Now, some lens manufacturers think that the best way to make a face look good is to soften the look in the lens. That's not part of our philosophy because we want to give you everything we can give you because like color correction, you can always get rid of it if you, want, if you don't want it. But if it's not there, you can't get it back. And there are times when you may want that, especially when screens and displays get better in the future. More realistic images tend to look better in those environments. So that's part of the signature philosophy is when it comes to faces, we are going to give you the most natural reproduction and you can change it from there if you want but we're not going to give you something that's artificially sharp or artificially soft. In the past, Airy made film lenses, and film has very specific optical needs. They're not the same needs that digital sensors have. And if anything, digital sensors are way more demanding of glass than anything we've ever had to deal with before. We have cameras that capture 17 stops of dynamic range. We capture color palettes that film could never reproduce fully. It's a, it's a really daunting task to try to redefine what looks good in high dynamic range, especially since we don't really know what's coming in 10 or 15 years, but we assume that the way we look at images is only going to improve. So let me show you a couple of things that we've built into these lenses that will help in the future when you remaster that footage. There's a lot going on in our lenses to work with HDR, but the three key elements are highlights. Highlights have a little bit of a glow around them. What we've discovered is that if there's a highlight with a hard edge and the camera is panning past it, that highlight will appear to stutter and it's really distracting. But if we add just a tiny bit of a glow around that highlight and soften it a little bit, that stutter is reduced or eliminated. The second thing we did is when there's a bright highlight in the frame, you'll see a glow and a little lifting of the blacks due to veiling glare right in the vicinity of, of that highlight. But away from that, the rest of the frame has full contrast. So when we do have veiling glare, it doesn't cover the entire lens. It's localized to a specific area. And lastly, chromatic aberration is virtually non-existent. In HDR, that can show up like neon. And we really wanted to eliminate that because once again, we're trying to capture the most naturally beautiful look that we can and chromatic aberration destroys that illusion and it's especially visible in HDR. So just by eliminating those three things, we've made huge steps to making these extremely HDR friendly lenses. And there's a lot more, but that's enough to get you started. As a cinematographer, I've shot with my share of vintage lenses, and there are some that I've really enjoyed. But with a vintage lens, you only really get one look. And sometimes that look is completely different from the other lenses in the set. So that can introduce some, some interesting variables to a fast-paced shoot. What we discovered with signature lenses is that they're such high-precision lenses, we can do an awful lot to change the look by adding an additional optical element to the lens. We're changing the performance of the lens itself. It's not a simple diffusion filter. This effect changes how the lens responds to light in three dimensions. You get different effects at different depths and they interact in a really fascinating way. So for example, we can add spherical aberration and make a signature lens look like a classic 1950s portrait lens. Or we can go the other direction with that aberration and re 
reduce the glow that you see in skin from a portrait lens, but still produce an effect that looks like you're shooting through a delicate black net diffusion that doesn't affect the shadows or the highlights. That's one thing that's really crucial to understand about these is that we're not changing the contrast of the lens when we create these effects. We can also add a swirling pattern around the outside edges of the frame that enhances what's already built into these lenses. We can change the characteristic of the cat's eye effect. Or we can eliminate that swirling effect completely and produce backgrounds that have hard contrast edges for a really vintage feel. Thanks very much for watching. I know it's a lot of information and honestly there's a lot more, but it's all really cool stuff. So if you have any questions and you want to drill deeper, please leave a comment below or email me at lenses at I love answering questions, so please feel free. Thanks.